Crafted during long days under the relentless South Florida sun, 102 green, orange, and white clad warriors readied for a season's worth of battles under the watchful eye of head coach Butch Davis. A season of battles that would see the Miami Hurricanes play six of their 12 games against teams ranked in the top 25. No other team in America played a schedule that featured two games against the second ranked team in the land and one game against the country's top ranked team. For 1999 will be remembered as a season of challenge. The 1999 edition of Hurricane Football began with a bang. The Hurricanes captured the attention of the college football world and the eyes of the nation when they took on perennial power Ohio State in the 17th edition of the Kickoff Classic. I thought our football program had progressed to the point that we needed a national stage to uh, to put this and showcase this football program. Uh, it was a great opportunity. It was an extra game. Uh, we knew that we had a young, inexperienced quarterback in Kenny Kelly, and the more opportunities that he would have a chance to play, uh, it would certainly pay some dividends going into a tough schedule. Playing in front of the third largest crowd in the history of the preseason event, Miami showed the 73,037 in attendance at a national television audience that the 1999 Hurricanes were going to be a force to be reckoned with. A smothering Miami defense held the Buckeyes to a three and out on their initial possession, turning the ball over to the offense. Running back James Jackson took over from there. Jackson the tailback, Kelly under center. He hands off to Jackson, has a bit of room on the right side around the 40, 35, 30 right sideline, the 20, 15, 10, 5, rock and roll, touchdown, Hurricane. The torch had been passed in the long legacy of quarterbacks that had branded Miami quarterback U to a highly touted redshirt sophomore gunslinger. Kenny Kelly proved worthy of the acclaim by engineering an offense that amassed 398 yards against a Buckeye squad that entered the game ranked seventh in the nation. Kelly threw for 245 yards, throwing for one touchdown and running for another in earning game MVP honors. His 67-yard scoring strike to Santana Moss in the final seconds of the first half staked UM to a 23-9 halftime lead. However, the 23-12 victory proved costly as running back Najee Davenport was lost for the season following a fourth quarter hit to his right knee, leaving one of the top running back tandems in the country minus a key ingredient. We felt like that we had the, the dynamic duo of the best one-two punch in college football as far as Najee and James Jackson, a guy that just absolutely could score from anywhere on the field with James Jackson and his speed and the punishing, brutal uh, uh, running that, that, that Najee brings to the offense. And, when Najee went down, uh, you know, it took that it took that two-headed person away from us. It created opportunities for Jarrett Payton and Clinton Portis. Those two guys really came through, but there were some growing pains as young players learned to have to step up and play. The Hurricanes returned to Miami for their home opener against Florida A&M, sporting a number eight ranking in the national polls. The Rattlers proved no match for a Hurricane team flexing its defensive muscle by limiting FAMU to 68 yards total offense for the game. With the 57-3 win, UM improved its record to 54-19-1 in home openers at the Orange Bowl. Before the night was through, 69 Miami players saw action. Not only did UM fans see a dominating performance by their beloved Hurricanes, they also caught a glimpse of the future as 10 players saw their first career action in a Hurricane uniform.
Anticipation was high, and the Orange Bowl was once again charged with electricity as the number two ranked Penn State Nittany Lions came to town. An overflow crowd was on hand to see the Canes put their eight game win streak against Big Ten teams on the line against Joe Paterno's troops. Following an Andy Crossland 29 yard field goal in the final minute of the second quarter, the Hurricanes headed to their halftime locker room, trailing 10 to 3. Penn State went on to increase its lead to 17 to 3 early in the third quarter before the UM offense came storming back. James Jackson led the charge by becoming the first running back in 15 games to rush for over 100 yards against the vaunted Penn State defense. A Jackson 18-yard touchdown run capped an eight-play 60-yard drive and pulled the Canes to within a touchdown. With the national television audience watching for the second time in three games, Kenny Kelly and Santana Moss decided to work a little magic. On the first play of the fourth quarter, Kelly hooked up with Moss on a 40-yard scoring strike. And before a stunned Penn State sideline knew what hit it, the score was tied at 17-all. In a classic bout of two heavyweights, the Nittany Lions went for the knockout punch on the ensuing possession, but were forced to settle for a 26-yard field goal in reclaiming a 20-17 lead. Now it was the Hurricanes' turn to answer the bell. Kelly once again found Moss for a nine-yard pickup that resulted in Penn State being flagged for a 15-yard face mask penalty. Two plays later, facing a second and 20, Kelly hit Reggie Wayne for an 18-yard pickup. Facing a third and two from the Nittany Lion 39, James Jackson, following a block from senior offensive guard Richard Mercier, raced around right end for a 39-yard touchdown run and a 23-20 Miami lead. Just when it seemed that the frenzied crowd of over 73,000 could not get any louder, the Orange Bowl erupted when an Edward Reed interception gave the Hurricane offense the ball at the Penn State 44-yard line with 4.28 left on the clock. Unfortunately, fate was not wearing orange and green on this September afternoon as the Penn State defense stiffened, holding the Hurricanes on downs, and one play later, Kevin Thompson hit Chaffee Fields on a 79-yard scoring pass for an improbable 27-23 Penn State victory. As we climb the ladder, as we try to put ourselves as a national contender in the next couple of years, playing in games like that, the ability to go in and finish a game, that's a learning process. And I think our football team will have learned from that Penn State game, and that'll be something that will come back to this program in years to come that'll help us win a national championship. Continuing one of the country's most grueling schedules, Miami took its show on the road. Following an upset loss to East Carolina, the Canes found themselves Tallahassee bound to face their longtime rival and number one ranked Florida State Seminoles. Once again, playing on the national stage, the Hurricanes showed the nation that they were capable of going toe to toe with any team in the country. In the rich history of this storied rivalry, quarterback Kenny Kelly and wide receiver Santana Moss turned in the best performances ever by a hurricane signal caller and wideout versus the Seminoles. <music> Kelly scorched the FSU secondary for 370 yards and three touchdowns on 27 of 41 passing, and Moss totaled 180 receiving yards and two TDs on nine receptions. In a series that features many a great moment, Santana Moss's 80-yard touchdown catch and run ranks among the best. With the score tied at 14 and Florida State knocking on the door at the UM10, the Hurricane defense turned away a potential scoring drive when Nate Webster separated fullback Dan Kendra from the ball and safety Al Blades recovered the fumble, leading to a 13-play, 89-yard, 5-minute, 34-second touchdown drive to give Miami a 21-14 lead.
Eventually, Florida State pulled out the win. But throughout the contest, the Miami Hurricanes provided the stiffest test for the Seminoles at Dilk Campbell Stadium in 1999. I think the way that we started that ball game and the way that we continued to battle to get back in it, it was something that this football team had not been able to do in previous years, uh, uh, was to match Florida State score for score, defense for defense. Going to the locker room tied up at 21 and having a couple of leads in the first half, I really think that that helped the confidence of this football team. Despite three losses in a row and a sub-500 record, the Canes retained the respect of the college football world as well as their ranking among the nation's top 25 teams. With the non-conference portion of the schedule out of the way, Miami turned its attention to the Big East and the Boston College Eagles. In a game that will put to rest once and for all the ghost of the infamous Hale Flutie Pass, the Hurricanes staged a miracle of their own with the comeback at Chestnut Hill. Trailing 28 to nothing midway through the third quarter, an eight-yard Will McPartland touchdown catch put UM on the board with just over two minutes left in the third quarter. What happened over the next 15 minutes proved that a hurricane can strike anywhere. Following a 32-yard James Jackson touchdown, it was time for the defense to flex its muscle. On the first play of BC's next possession, linebacker Chris Campbell laid out Eagles running back Cedric Washington. The bounding pigskin found its way into the waiting hands of UM defensive end William Joseph, who returned the fumble 15 yards to give Miami the ball on the Boston College six-yard line. One play later, the Hurricanes had whittled a 28-point deficit down to seven. And they weren't done yet. On their next possession, the Canes marched 76 yards, helped by runs of 20 and 21 yards by James Jackson and a 10-yard scoring strike to tight end Daniel Bubba Franks to tie the score at 28-all. The UM defense once again did its part by holding the Eagles to three downs and out. The offense got the ball back with 316 left. With calm precision, Miami moved the ball to the Boston College 35-yard line. Facing a fourth and 17 and 14 ticks remaining on the clock, Davis called timeout to gather his troops and plot their final attack. Those are the kind of decisions that, that head coaches sometimes it tests you know, your belief system, what you really truly believe in about your players, their ability to do things. Uh, you know, I think that the common logic, a lot of people said, hey, let's try the 52-yard field goal. Let's uh, maybe take it to overtime. I really felt like that they were going to give us a chance to complete the ball. I thought that they would have an end zone mentality, that they were going to try to protect against the Hail Mary throw, and that we could get the first down. We could throw the ball underneath and get out of bounds. Opting not to go for a 52-yard field goal, Davis instead set his offensive unit back on the field, led by a hobbled quarterback whom two plays prior sprained his ankle. Rolling the dice one more time, Davis called a dash left. Kelly in the shotgun, King short side right, two wideouts left, Wayne and Moss. Hurricanes are going to take their shot. Kelly takes the snap. He throws, left side, caught by Wayne at the 13-yard line. He falls out of bounds there, and the Canes have it. Kenny Kelly ran the play to perfection, rolling to his left and delivering the ball to Reggie Wayne 22 yards downfield. Then it was up to the left foot of place kicker Andy Crossland to finish the job. It's a 30-yard attempt for Crossland from the left hash mark. Snap is down. The kick is up. Plenty of distance. And it is good! The Hurricanes take the lead! As Crossland's 30-yard field goal sailed through the uprights, the Hurricanes had completed a comeback for the ages, putting up 31 unanswered points over the final 17 minutes and 8 seconds to secure a 31-28 victory. Guys, sometime in your life, as a favor to yourself, to the things that you learn here, when you're faced with tough times, don't ever give up. Never, ever, ever give up and believe in each other. Guys, you did a great job. I am so proud. You deserve it. Great job, guys. The comeback at Boston College probably salvaged the season. Uh, had we not won that ball game and put ourselves uh, 
uh, after having some tough losses back to back uh, with the, the disruptions in the schedule, I, I don't think it, without a win at Boston College, that certainly we would be going to a January 1 bowl game today. The Canes found themselves in a similar situation one week later against the Mountaineers of West Virginia. Trailing 13 to nothing at the half, Miami rallied for a 28 to 20 victory. During the game, the Miami defense picked off West Virginia quarterback Mark Bulger four times, the most interceptions by a Hurricane team since 1991. In a dominating 33-3 win over Pittsburgh, Kane's middle linebacker Nate Webster made history by becoming the first UM linebacker to register two interceptions in a game. Once again, the eyes of the college football world were on the Hurricanes as they prepared to travel to Blacksburg, Virginia to face the second-ranked Virginia Tech Hokies in a Big East showdown, with the winner getting the inside track on the league title and a berth in the Bowl Championship Series. In a hard-hitting affair, the Hurricanes struck first. Defensive tackle Adrian Wilson nailed Tech quarterback Michael Vick behind the line of scrimmage, leading to a UM fumble recovery. After a seven-yard touchdown pass to Andre King, the Canes put a hush into the Lane Stadium crowd by taking a 10-0 lead. However, the Hurricanes could not overcome six turnovers and the loss of quarterback Kenny Kelly in falling to the undefeated Hokies. We went to Blacksburg with the expectations that we could win that football game. Got off to a great start. Things mushroomed late in the third quarter and the fourth quarter that, uh, that clearly blew the score somewhat out of proportion. But I thought our kids fought their guts out. They played extremely hard. Their ability to put behind them what happened on that date and come back and win uh, all the rest of the games at the end of the season shows a lot of character by this team. Faced with the loss of Kelly for the final three games of the regular season, Davis turned the offense over to an untested raw rookie. Against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers in the Orange Bowl, Kenny Dorsey became the first true freshman quarterback to start at UM since Mike Rodriguez in 1978. With Clinton Portis stepping in for an injured James Jackson, the Canes were starting true freshmen at quarterback and running back in the same game for the first time ever. Dorsey proved equal to the task, showing a poise and confidence not often found in an 18-year-old just out of high school. Dorsey ended the day completing 19 of 26 passes for 194 yards and two touchdowns while Portis rushed for 133 yards in a 55 to nothing dismantling of Rutgers. Needing a victory to become bowl eligible and looking to extract revenge, the Hurricanes prepared for its annual Thanksgiving weekend clash with Syracuse. Dorsey drops back, throws, left side of the end zone. Miami dominated in all phases of the game, recording its second safety of the year, blocking a punt, returning an interception for a touchdown, and returning a punt for a touchdown for the second time in as many games. When it was all over, the final scoreboard read Miami 45, Syracuse 13. It was a very, very good performance in all three phases. It's probably one of the most complete games that we had played offensively, defensively, and special teams, uh, particularly the latter half of the season. Playing on the first weekend in December for the second time in as many years because a game had to be rescheduled due to a hurricane, Miami faced off against Temple, needing a victory to secure a spot in the Gator Bowl on New Year's Day. The Hurricanes had little trouble with the Owls, rolling to a 55 to nothing victory. The offense was running on high octane, accumulating a season high 540 total yards. The Canes defense proved stingy and nasty in holding the Owls to 41 yards rushing and 138 yards of total offense. 
With the pounding of Temple, Miami established a new school record for points over a three-game span with 155, breaking the old mark of 152 set in 1933. With one last game to play before the Hurricanes say farewell to the 1999 senior class, it must be noted that the 17 players which comprise this class have laid a foundation that guarantees future success for the program. Each one of them, if you look at their careers throughout uh, their University of Miami days, every one of them has made enormous contributions to this program. They've been starters. They've uh, uh, they've been terrific players. They've been highly productive. Some of them have gotten a tremendous amount of notoriety and credit. Uh, but the one thing that they have done collectively as a group is they've provided unique leadership. This group of guys five years ago banded together and they've kind of been the foundation and the cornerstone that has helped us try to rebuild this program. And, uh, the hard work, the trials and the tribulations that they've had to go through because when they decided to come to Miami in 1995, it wasn't the popular decision around the country. The program was getting ready to go through three years of probation, reduced number of scholarships, uh, the inability to go to bowl games. And these kids decided to come to Miami in the face of all this adversity and because of them, we're coming out of that adversity going to a January 1 bowl game. Not only has their dedication paid dividends on the field, but they have achieved great success off the field as well, as all 17 have already graduated or are within one semester of doing so. So to seniors, Michael Burrow, Andy Crossland, Pat Del Vecchio, Mondrell Fulcher, Robert Hall, Zachary Hart, Rod Mack, Richard Mercier, Jeff Popovich, Robert Sampson, Eric Schnupp, Michael Smith, James Sutton, Matt Sweeney, Wilbur Valdez, Nick Ward, and Ty Wise. Be assured that your leadership and desire for the University of Miami football program to maintain its position among the nation's elite will be carried forward. The future of Hurricane football looks bright as the program heads into the new millennium. Offensively, the Hurricanes boast a quartet of running backs. James Jackson, hampered by injury most of the season, can score from anywhere on the field. Freshman All-American Clinton Portis established a new freshman rushing record while recording five 100-yard rushing games this season. Freshman Jared Payton, in just his third season of football, showed that the fruit never falls far from the tree. And Najee Davenport, in a season reduced to a single game, showed what he is capable of. With the maturation of Kenny Kelly, who led the Big East in passing yards per game and touchdown passes thrown, and the emergence of true freshman Ken Dorsey, whose first three college starts led to Miami's final three victories, the Hurricane offense will be in capable hands for many years to come. Despite the departure of All-American guard Richard Mercier and All-Big East center Ty Wise, the offensive front line will continue to dominate as Joaquin Gonzalez, Martin Bibla, Scott Puckett, Greg LaFair, and the rest of the troops gained a valuable year's worth of seasoning. All-American tight end Bubba Franks proved to be the complete package, establishing a new UM career record for touchdown receptions for a tight end. And junior college transfer Ivan Mercer proved his talent in a backup role. A gifted core of receivers led by Santana Moss, Reggie Wayne, Andre King, and a skillful group of young guns left their calling card for next season, giving Miami signal callers a plethora of weapons.
Defensively, the Hurricanes packed a wallop, creating 33 turnovers and leading the Big East in turnover margin. Damian Lewis, Matt Walters, Adrian Wilson, William Joseph, and Jamal Green may have worn out their welcome in opponents' backfields come next season, but in 1999, UM's defensive front administered many a not-so-warm greeting as the Canes racked up 41 quarterback sacks. Led by All-American Nate Webster and All-Big East selection Dan Morgan, the Miami linebacking core proved to be less than hospitable to opposing offenses. Webster and Morgan combined to tally 289 tackles this season. Following the season-ending knee injury to Michael Smith, Chris Campbell stepped in to start each of the last eight games. The aggressiveness and talent of the Hurricane secondary was reminiscent of past Miami defensive backfields. Three of the four spots on the All-Big East defensive backfield were filled by Hurricanes. Al Blades, Edward Reed, and Mike Lump each garnered league honors. Add Leonard Myers, Marquise Fitzgerald, Jeff Popovich, and James Lewis to the bunch, and the UM secondary became known to enemy receivers as the School of Hard Knocks. Special teams play has been an important ingredient in the Hurricanes' recipe for success. Behind the stellar play of such standouts as Aaron Moser, Ken Dangerfield, James Scott, and Philip Buchanan, the Miami kick coverage units rank among the nation's best, while UM ranks ninth nationally in punt return average. The emergence of punter Freddie Capshaw proved to be a valuable weapon as one quarter of his punts pinned opponents inside their 20-yard line. I've been very proud of this football team all year long. Uh, I don't think people recognize how difficult that this season has been. It's been the most challenging football season that the University of Miami has ever played. Uh, uh, the number one ranked schedule throughout the course of the year, a couple of times playing the number one team, twice playing the number two team, six opponents rated in the top 25. This football team has had a lot of challenges and it's responded every single time. As the Hurricanes prepare for their third bowl appearance during the Butch Davis era, be assured that the Canes will rise to the challenge.